Welcome back to B2 Gaming. My name is Volgraza, and today, there's been an update! Well, not exactly today, more like Thursday, you know. We try to get our update videos out as soon as we can. But like I said in our last update video, we have main jobs <coughs> that we work at every day. Um, you may hear a little rumbling in the background. There's a little storm in the area, so uh, sorry for the background noise. And of course, I've always noticed you can hear my keyboard uh, for some odd reason. Even though this is a cheap $18 mic for Walmart. Uh, anyway, um, let's just jump right in. All right, so F6 back into my body here. Uh, as you can see, uh, they've updated the textures. And you can press, I can just press escape real quick and you can go over the mod list. A spherical gravity generator, uh, you can now, and that's what that is in the background right there. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But for now, this is the new textures. They've added, redone the textures and kind of mapped them differently. They've added more detail. Uh, it's, this is still, still alpha, so, I mean, it's not perfect right here. You can see there's, um, some like overlap or whatever, but it looks really good. It's a lot more detailed than before. Scratches reflect the light really good. Uh, you can see that the heavy armor here, this is a heavy armor block, as you can see right here on the side. It's just that on the side here, this part does not look like heavy armor at all. You know, maybe they could add like some more rivets along the sides so that it definitely stands out like the rivets here. And the same thing with these blocks here. These are heavy armor. But again, they look pretty much like this on the surface area. If this was here, and this was here, and that's all I could see, I could not tell you tell the difference between the two. Well, I mean, maybe I have to look really, really hard. But for me, I, I don't know. Just, you know, Keen, hey, I love your game. I think it's freaking awesome. And you guys are doing amazing work. But can you please just, like, make this look like heavy armor? That would be awesome. Like, more rivets. That would, that would just do it, because there's all crud load rivets right here. And then with the corners, nothing. You know, hey, I know, maybe you're saving time. I'll probably update that later. But uh, anyway, let's uh, jump right into the other thing here, which is... Um, let's, let's do the respawn ship thing. So they've added some new respawn ships, and I really haven't got a chance to actually play around with them that much. But you can now... Uh, basically build your own. So if you have a ship you want, and I don't have a ship that I built here for Coopers, but basically you would uh, copy it, like with, if you have copy enabled, you just press control C. Uh, but if you have a block selected like so, you just press control C, boom, and then you can press F11, and a little menu will show up. My F11 doesn't seem to want to work. It doesn't do anything. I'm guessing it's because there's something else that I have <clears throat> that is bound wrong or something, I'm not really sure. Um, but then there'd be a menu that would pop up and you could uh, select, uh, save it as a prefab, and then you can mod it back into the game as your own personal starting ship. So, you know, you have those uh, ships out there that would be a great uh, starting ship that you, get, that you could build and put that on the workshop. You could have your own build your own, and then put it into the game. Now, let's move on to this last thing, which I'm sure you've been wondering, what the heck is going on? Well, this is a spherical generator. They've added it to the game, and basically what it does, and let me just move back here real quick, you press Shift, Alt, F12, and you can see there's this big ring, and it's only when this is in the frame, uh, around it. And this is the gravity field. It's a complete sphere. And now these artificial mass blocks, each one around this, and there's an even amount of, uh, around the whole ring, is being pulled toward this centerpiece here at a specific, you know, a, a constant rate. This, I have it set to a very low rate. I have another one all the way out there that's set to 1G, and you can see how rigid it is. This is set to, like... 0.1 G. <coughs> it's not very much, but um, it's pretty cool, and this actually allows me to demonstrate something I've been wanting to show you guys for a while, but really haven't had a way to do that. And if we go over to this other, I'm going to turn Shift Alt 12 here, Shift Alt 12, and we go over to this uh, little setup here, we'll see that uh, this uh, you can. This is pretty much similar to what's called a Dyson sphere. Now. Basically, 
This works like regular gravity, you know, it's, if this was like a planet, you'd be walking around the surface and you're pulled down in every single direction, no matter what. And if you jumped off, you could like, you can orbit around this thing. It is so much fun. Whoa, yeah. All right, anyway, uh, so let me turn my thrusters back on. Now, a Dyson Sphere is a theoretical um, mega engineering thing. All right, so you have, let's say that this spherical generator was our parent star, so like the sun. And this big ring was around the entire thing. Now, every piece of this ring would be pulled toward the sun. Now, according to shell theory, basically, um, you would have the center of mass, which would be usually be around about right, not exactly right here, but it, the center of mass for a big ring, continuous ring like this, is going to be toward its center because every part is contributing. So this piece up here is being pulled just the same as this piece. So it's all going to stay pretty stable, you know, unless there's some oscillation in the star, like it fluctuates up and down. And then you'll have some wobbling like that. But, you know, there's ways to counterbalance that with thrusters and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, on the outside of the sphere, you could have atmosphere. You know, or, or things would cling to the outside. You would have gravity. But on the inside, if we wanted to walk around on the inside, pretty much not going to happen. You would land into the sphere. Anything on the surface here, unless it's like bolted down, would not be able to stay on the surf inside surface. <coughs> so you could not have a a uh, atmosphere in here unless you had a like habitation module that actually had. Well, I mean, like inverted. So you could have I don't know. Um, yeah, it would be like a little trough. So it would be upside down. And let's see. So kind of like kind of like this. All right, so if you had a little ring, an uh, inner ring like this, you could, in theory, put you know, um, stuff here and then in have like windows and stuff to, or whatever, to bring in the sunlight so you could have like heating and energy. And, and, that, and the reason for you would have a Dyson sphere in the first place <coughs> is to collect as much energy from your parent star as possible. And like at that particular point in civilization, you would need very strong materials and a whole bunch of other technology that we do not have right now. It's just not, not as feasibly possible. What we could do is more or less a Dyson Swarm. And we'll get into that some other time. Um, also, a lot of people think the Earth is hollow and that there's like a little miniature inner sun. And you know, you, you can like, this is 400 miles thick and then there's like another civilization on the inside that lives there. Um, no, for the same reasons I just stated here, if you were on the inside of this thing and tried to walk around, you would fall toward the center and be burned alive. Also, if there was a miniature sun on the inside of our planet, it would be cake, it would be burning and melting and throwing off plasma and, you know, coronal mass ejections and solar storms. You would not want to live on the surface of this if there was an inner sun. I am so sorry, but hollow earth theory, you do not, you do not make any sense at all. Uh, anyway, um, that pretty much covers it, I think. Let's see here. Uh, export ships. Yep, we got that. High textures. Yep. Better prefabs. Oh, they also added, um... LOD support for mods. LOD support is basically uh, long, I think it's long distance, what are we, loading on distance or something like that. Uh, which basically, the, the further you are, are, like say you have a lot of detail on, on a prefab, right? So you're up really close and you're like, wow, you know, it loads in the model that is super detailed. So I mean, these are still work in progress. They're just place, I don't know, placeholders, but they, you got the basic idea. So you got a lot of detail. And then the further you get away, it loads in models that are lower poly because you're not going to need a whole crap ton of poly polygons if you're far away and you can't really see that much detail. This also basically helps reduce lag. So anybody who's modded something that needs to be <laughs> smaller or from a distance or basically helps them 
tweak out the uh, the lag problems in the game. Um, anyway, let's go take a look at this one real quick. This one is on 1G, and you'll see that it's pretty pretty stable, actually. Um, yeah, looks like it's just kind of hanging out and wobbling back and forth. Well, let's let's see if we can get on it. Oh boy, it may just throw everything off. All right, uh, I'll just oh oh run it. Okay, this is this is pretty cool. Yeah. Now imagine if that that was a ship down there that was moving around. I'm I might might do another video with that later. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, well, this is kind of wobbly, but you can you know jump off in orbit. Oh yeah. Oh, I landed. Well, well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more videos. Uh, we do a survival series where we have a more or less a basic kind of storyline going on. Um, come back for more videos, and as always, thank you for watching, and be good.